Okay, let's start today with a very strange question. And the question is this one. How many degrees are in a Martian circle? Did I say strange? That's a very peculiar question. What could it possibly mean? What am I talking about? What is a Martian circle? Isn't that just a circle? What's this question really about? All right, so before we attend to this question, let me give you two pieces of advice. When solving a problem in mathematics or in life, there are two fundamental key beginning steps. Step one, be your honest human self and have an emotional reaction and acknowledge it. If a question like this looks scary, go, go, oh, that's scary, say I'm scared. If it looks like curious and weird, you don't know what to do, say, that's curious and weird, I don't know what to do. Or if you just like absolutely think this is cool and amazing, say, wow, what an amazing, neat question. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but isn't it neat? Whatever your emotional reaction is, step one, acknowledge it. Be your honest human self. Mathematics is for humans, by humans, to be used by humans. So be human in your work with mathematics. Then step number two, once you've had your emotional reaction, take a deep breath and do something. Do anything, anything to get you going. Work past an emotional impasse. Just do something. Read the question again. Read the question backwards. Turn the page upside down. Draw a picture that might be relevant to the question. Draw a picture that could be irrelevant. Draw a fish. Draw a tree. Whatever you do, just do something. Just get yourself moving, because once you start getting yourself moving, you'll start getting ideas and you'll start moving forward, which is great, and actually have some success in moving with the question. All right, so in this one, I look at this question and my emotional reaction is right off the bat, whoa, this is weird, don't know what to do. So I'm gonna say, it's weird, I don't know what to do. I take a deep breath, and I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna do something. In fact, Look at this, word Martian circle. That's the weird part for me. I've just identified the weird word for me. I mean, if I change this word to something more familiar like what I am, an earthling, how many degrees in an earthling circle, then I actually know what the answer is. It's this answer. We say there's a count of 360 degrees in a circle in one full turn. So that actually now begs the question, put this aside for a moment, who chose the number 360 for the count of degrees in one full turn? It's kind of a weird number just to pull out of the air. Where's that coming from? So let's think about that. Let's focus on an earthling circle for a moment. So who chose the number 360 and why that number? I hate to think about it, thinking about it. So there's an earthling circle. What do we earthlings experience as one great big natural cycle, one great big turning? We can't help but think we earthlings live on a particular planet that goes around the sun and we experience 365 days in one full year. We notice the cycle of the years. In fact, people knew way back then there's actually slightly more than 365 days in a year. The Babylonians some 4,000 years ago actually knew the numbers more like 365 and a quarter days in a year. So it seems very natural then for humans to associate the number 365 and a quarter with one full turn what we experience on this planet, the number of days in a year. But now, let's be honest, let's be very honest. Would you like to work with the number 365 and a quarter all the time? No, it's a horrible number. No one in their right mind would want to work with that number. So what's the natural thing to do? If you want to work with this number, I'd probably take it, round it to something simpler. So let's just round it, let's round that number. That seems the natural thing for humans to do. So if I round it to the nearest integer, I get 365. Or we might round it to the nearest 10. But if you look at this number, the nearest 10 is actually 370. But it seems we Earthlings decided to round it down to 360 instead, which is a little bit odd. So why do we choose to go with 360 rather than a more natural number like 365 or 370, which comes up from rounding? All right, let's think about it. Let's be very human yet again. So back in the day, 4,000 years ago, you were doing arithmetic basically all in your head. You might be like scribbling on sand or like bits of some version of paper or something, but in the end, the arithmetic's in your head. And often you want to like do halves of things, quarters of things, thirds of things and so on. Which of these numbers is nicest to work with in your head? Now if I'm doing half a turn, 365 is actually a little bit awkward already. It's not even even, so I probably wouldn't want to work with 365 because often I want to halve it and that'd be awkward right off the bat. But I can halve 360, I can halve 370, they're nice for halving. Actually, 360 is also very good for dividing by three. It's a multiple of three. And actually, 370 isn't. In fact, 360 is also a multiple of four. 370 isn't. 360 is a multiple of five. 370 is. 360 is a multiple of six. No, nope. multiple of seven. 
No, nothing's ever a multiple of seven. Multiple of eight, multiple of nine, multiple of ten, multiple of twelve, multiple of fifteen, multiple of eighteen, multiple of twenty. It's crazily divisible. This is a ridiculously nice number for doing arithmetic with. So people said, let's just go with that one. It's close enough to the number of days in a year. It makes the math really natural and easy and wonderful. Let's say 360 degrees corresponds to one full. A count of 360 for the number of degrees in a circle. That's how we humans came up with that number. All right, so now back to the original question. We've answered the Earthling version. Let's go to the Martian version. What would the Martians do? What do we need to know about the Martian experience to be able to answer this question here? Well, this is based on the number of days in a year, so we need to know the number of days in a Martian year. Now, we Earthlings call a day, a Martian day, a sol. And it turns out on Mars, one sol lasts 24 hours and 37 minutes, so it's slightly longer than us. So they have slightly longer days than we do, but the real question is, how many souls are in a Martian year? How many days in a year does a Martian experience? And if you look it up, it turns out there are 667 souls in a Martian year. Oops, seven make it look a little bit better. Beautiful. Now, the question is, do you think Martians would like doing arithmetic with the number 667 all the time? No. So what would they probably do? Round it. Round it to a nicer, friendlier number. And now it's a matter of guessing, speculation. What do you think they round it to? Maybe they round it to 660, is that a pretty good number? Maybe they go to 640, or maybe they go to 700 or 720, who knows? Now it's a matter of guessing. But my point is, now we can see the thinking here and what made us choose the number 360 for the count of degrees in a circle. It's not actually a mathematics number. It's all about the luck that we had to land on this particular planet, going around that particular sun, having 365 and a quarter days in a year. So that's a non-math number. The real math number is one, one full term. But we humans like to think in 360 because it matches our human experience on this particular planet. So mathematics actually is a very human story. And you can get to it by thinking about Martians and other places in the universe. It's kind of wonderful. It's great. All right, moving on to the next lesson.